Welcome to Hopalong Hollow, where the blueberries grow sweet and the moss feels soft beneath your feet. We're going to take a little garden tour this morning. Hi, Fiona. <laughs> Oops. Hi, this is the view that greets me every morning when I come out with my coffee. And once upon a time, this was nothing but a grub-eaten, unhealthy lawn. I started this garden, I guess, about three years ago. And it has really taken over. It's a pretty wild and crazy garden, but I really like this kind of garden. It's a cottage garden. It's unruly. It's, it's crazy. And it's very old-fashioned. I feel really fortunate to have this wonderful view. I've got birds all morning long and all this luscious green. And I am going to show you some little visitors that we get every year. This is our third year in a row that we've had the barn swallows laying their eggs up in this little mud daub nest. We get to watch the babies as they grow, as they learn to fly, and then they take off and we see them again the next year. Uh, let's walk along this garden path, which uh, this is old salvaged brick. When I lay brick, it's pretty crooked, it's pretty lumpy, but I like it that way. Um, these old uh, edging bricks, these are 200 years old, and I was lucky that a friend gave them to me. Uh, along the side, you'll see the flowers just tumbling over. Um, I know there's a rule that says you plant the tall stuff in the back, but little did I know when I threw those larkspur seeds in that they were going to grow to be about five or six feet tall. <laughs> look at them. <laughs> they look great. I think it's just beautiful. I don't care if it's crazy. This is my signature picket fence. Uh, I do these little bunnies, squirrels, and rabbits on my pickets because they are characters from my books. And I have cut over 400 of these pickets, and this fence is in different areas of the yard. In this part of the garden, it anchors a stone wall, which runs all the uh, entire length. Look at that. I wish you could smell this because really, you can smell the roses and the honeysuckle. And it's just lovely. These are knockout roses planted with bee balm and uh, oxeye daisy. Uh, lots of little ground covers and lemon balm. Tucked inside of that garden there are wild roses. And oh my goodness, irises. They have already bloomed. Unfortunately, you can't show you those, but I had over 800 of them. And that was um, something somebody gave me. I was really lucky that a friend um, let me come and dig up all the irises in a property she was selling. And I just put them everywhere. Now, um, over here you see a little frog pond off the porch. Unfortunately, it's got a leak in it, which I have not been able to fix. And uh, If anybody knows how to fix a vinyl frog pond, let me know. This is going to be a sedum hedge. Uh, here we have some hydrangea. They just started to bloom. The wildflowers. This shady side of the garden is really lovely. It's serene and, and peaceful. Oh, you can get so many beautiful shade plants. Hostas, a stillbees, bleeding heart, columbine. We've got some peonies over here. Um, Let's see, what else have we got? Oh, cherries, which I dearly love. And in the corner is a bar beehive, which is empty. Um, I did not get bees this year. I was worried about um, their survival because of some insecticide spraying that went on. Now, here we have <laughs> a little visitor. Actually, this is one of our guests. We have over 10 birdhouses, and every one of them is filled this year. It's just wonderful to watch. Look at this sweet little bird. <laughs> you get to watch him all her all day long, going back and forth, flitting from 
this branch to that branch to feed her little babies. And these are two of our ducks, Mia and Jeremiah. Ducks are the happiest, most wonderful little characters you can imagine. And here we have a bag of ferns that a friend of mine dropped off. She said to be careful because she said they will really take over. I like plants that take over because I just moved them to another garden. If we get too many, if it gets overpopulated, that's okay. They can go somewhere else and be happy. Um, this is the front of the creek. You can see this wall. My husband and I drug these stones from everywhere, from the hollow, the creek, the meadows, the fields. This was truly a labor, but it makes a great stone wall and we try to build it up a little bit more every year. Here you can see this uh, profusion of bloom, vines, clematis, there's some dark old roses there. Believe it or not, um, there are very few weeds in here. Oh yeah, of course I have a couple, but most of this is just an overpopulation of flowers and plants and beautiful things. But you know, you really, really should think about planting a front yard garden. Dig up that old lawn and just fill it full of plants. You will just love it. We love this one, as crazy as it is. We think it's a great garden. Believe me, I'm an amateur garden gardener. But I'm learning. <laughs> I think a lot of plants. He's been great. Look at that face. <laughs> the Peabody boys enjoy the garden too. Now I've got a duck here. She's been laying her little eggs in this corner of the garden, but I will not let her sit on them because if I do, a nasty little raccoon will come and grab her in the dead of night. So I just take her eggs away from her. If you've never had a duck egg, yum. They are great to bake with. They're very rich. Of course, there's um, always a mud puddle available here, there. Anyway, I hope you will uh, be inspired a little bit by this video, and uh, I'll be back next time.